In this video, let's practice using some different properties of logarithms so that we can approximate some expressions together. We're given that log base a of 2 is approximately equal to 0.3562, log base a of 3 is about 0.5646, and log base a of 5 is about 0.8271. What we're going to do is use these three bits of information along with some different properties of logarithms to approximate the expressions below. No matter what, we're going to try to get each of these expressions to either say log base a of 2, log base a of 3, or log base a of 5 in them. So for number 1, we have log base a of 6 over 5, or 6 fifths. Now remember, we can use that quotient property and rewrite this as log base a of 6 minus log base a of 5. So we can go ahead and use our product property and break up log base a of 6 into log base a of 2 plus log base a of 3, since 2 times 3 is equal to 6 and then we'll have this minus log base a of 5. Then if we just go ahead and substitute in these approximations in their decimal form, these approximations, and if we go ahead and just add these up together, we're gonna get 0.0937. Let's try number two. For number two, we have log base a of 18, so let's see if we can use the product rule and break down 18 into some smaller factors. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start with log base a of nine plus log base a of 2, since 9 times 2 is equal to 18. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do next is break up this log base a of 9 into a power here, since 9 is a perfect square. Rewriting this as log base a of 3 to the second power, and still keeping the rest of the expression, we now have two logs that we can deal with. Next, let's go ahead and use that power rule and bring this 2 over in front of this logarithm. And so we're going to have 2 times log base a of 3 plus log base a of 2. Now what were the values of these again? Let's just go ahead and look at these. And let's go ahead and substitute in some decimals here. If we go ahead and replace each of these with their decimal approximations, we're going to get this expression right here. And then if we throw this into a calculator, we're going to get about 1.4854. All right, for number three, we have log base A of 100. So let's see if we can break down 100 into some smaller numbers here. Since 100 is a perfect square, let's go ahead and rewrite it using a power, and say we have log base a of 10 to the second power. Then using that product property, let's go ahead and take that 2 and write it in front. And if we do that, we're going to have 2 times log base a of 10. And then we can go ahead and use that product property and break 10 into some smaller factors of 5 and 2 and rewrite this as 2 times the quantity of this log base a of 2 plus log base a of 5. Remember that we know the approximations for each of these logs, so let's go ahead and replace those with their decimal approximations. And then if we plug this into a calculator, we're going to get about 2.3666. Here's number 4. For number 4, we have log base a of the square root of 3. Now, we can rewrite radicals using a rational exponent or a fractional exponent, and so let's go ahead and do that. And we can rewrite the square root of 3 as 3 to the 1 half power. Those mean the same thing. Now that we have this in exponential form and we have this exponent, we can go ahead and use that power rule and bring that down in front. And we can go ahead and write, so we have 1 half times log base a of 3. And if we want to go ahead and write in the approximation for the decimal, this is going to be 1 half multiplied by the 0.5646. Plugging this into a calculator, we're going to get about 0.2823. All right, here is another one. Let's try number five together. All right, for number five, we have another square root radical here. So there's a couple ways we could go about this. I'm not going to, in this particular case, simplify the radical. I'm just going to go ahead and use the same strategy as the last time we saw a radical. And so instead of writing this in radical form, this is what it would look like in exponential form. Using that power rule, let's go ahead and take that one half and throw it down in front. And if we do that, we're going to have one half times this log base A of 75. Now let's see if we can break down this log base a of 75 using that product property and find some factors of 75. And I'm thinking of 25 times 3. So we can write this as 1 half times a quantity of log base a of 25 plus log base a of 3. Now notice that 25 is a perfect square, so we can actually rewrite that as an exponent of 5 to the second power. So we can rewrite that as log base a of 5 squared plus log base a of 3. Using that power rule, let's go ahead and take this 2 and put it down in front of this log. And if we do that, we're going to have this 1 half times this 2 times log base a of 5 plus log base a of 3. 
we're going to get about 1.1094. For number 6, we have log base a of 4 ninths, and 4 over 9 is a quotient, so let's go ahead and use that quotient property. Using that quotient property, we have a difference of these two logarithms. And then notice that this 4 and 9 are both perfect squares, so let's go ahead and rewrite those using exponents. 4 is the same thing as 2 squared. And then 9 is the same thing as 3 squared. Alright, so that's good because we know both of these approximations. Let's just go ahead and use that power property and bring this 2 in front for this logarithm over here, and bring this 2 in front as well over here. Rewriting this, we're going to get 2 times log base a of 2 minus 2 times log base a of 3. Then going ahead and substituting in their decimal approximations, we're going to get this expression right here, and then if we throw this into a calculator, we're going to get about 1.8416. For number 7, we have log base a of the cube root of 15. And so just like in the past, let's go ahead and rewrite this radical into exponential form. So the same thing as taking the cube root is raising to the one third power. So we can rewrite this as log base a of 15 to the one third power. Now using that power property, we can go ahead and bring that one third in front and multiply it by this logarithm. So if we do that, we're going to have one third times this log base a of 15. And then let's go ahead and use that product property and break 15 down into two of these logs that we do know, like 5 and 3. And so we'll have 1 third times this quantity of log base a of 3 plus log base a of 5. Now we know the decimal approximations for these, so let's go ahead and substitute those in. So we have 1 third multiplied by the sum of these two decimals. And plugging this into a calculator, we're going to get about 0.4639. All right, finally for number eight, we have log base a of 54 raised to the second power. Now right away, you can see this little exponent of two up here. Let's go ahead and rearrange that so we can use that power property and move it down in front right from the start. And now let's go ahead and take this log base a of 54 and break that down into some smaller factors using the product property. Now ideally, we're gonna be using threes, twos, and fives like we did in all the other problems here. So let's take 54 and maybe start with breaking that into 27 times two. So if we go ahead and do that, we're gonna have two times log base a of 27 plus log base a of two. And then we could break this 27 into three times three times three, or we can say that's gonna be three to the third power or three cubed. So rewriting that 27 as a perfect cube, we're gonna have two multiplied by this log base a of three to the third power plus log base a of two. Using that power property, let's go ahead and take this three up top and move it in front. And if we do that, we're gonna have two times the quantity of three plus log base a of three plus log base a of two. And then substituting in our decimal approximations, we're gonna have this expression right over here. And then if we go ahead and plug this into a calculator, we're gonna get about, about 4.1000. All right, so there you have eight different practice problems where we use some different properties of logarithms to approximate the values of each of these expressions. If you found the video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing with a classmate or friend who might also find it helpful. And as always, keep up the great work that you're already doing, and I'll see you in the next one.